I have a feeling this will be one of my least viewed videos of the day because I didn't even really know. I kind of had forgotten about this show. I mean, did you know that there is a Game of Thrones prequel called House of the Dragon coming out? I mean, yeah, we all kind of like knew it and heard about it, but like, did you did you know? Like, it's still a thing. Now, the headlines, of course, are absolutely buried in, uh, you know, everyone talking about how ridiculous Lord of the Rings will be. But for Game of, the Th Game of Thrones fans, those that weren't completely uh, turned off by the final season, uh, this will be more the same. It, it could be even worse than Amazon's disrespect of Tolkien's work because House of the Dragon is coming right out not even pretending to do anything else. There are articles like this on Slash Film. New House of the Dragon fixes Game of Thrones diversity problem. Uh, what? Game of Thrones spinoff blackwashed to avoid another bunch of white people on screen. What kind of headline is that? Not content to just ruin one story from the Song of Fire and Ice universe, HBO has decided that it's going to take another piece of George R.R. R. Martin's fantasy magnum opus and drive it into the ground, this time by being racist. Coming to a TV screen near you, House of the Dragon, a spin-off series to the massively popular Game of Thrones, the show is set centuries before the events of Game of Thrones and centers on an internal struggle dubbed the Dance of the Dragons between two factions of the ruling Targaryen dynasty on the continent of Westeros. It's a wonderfully epic story with twists and turns of bravery and betrayal and sword and sorcery we've come to expect from Martin's world. But since we're living in the woke world, bent on forcing every piece of media to be a vehicle for leftist ideology, there's already some red flags for this fledgling show. And no, I'm not talking about House Lannister's banners. Fans raised the eyebrows when news emerged of actor Steve Toussaint would play principal character Lord Coral's Valerian, uh... Toussaint is black, which causes some huge plot holes in the show. To avoid revealing spoilers, I'll just tell you that the blood and the ancestry play a large role in the tension between the Targaryen factions, and the characters give their loyalty those who, uh, to those factions based on whom they believe is the true and rightful heir to the throne. Genetics and physical features play a huge part in the lore of A Song of Fire and Ice. So much of the plot points to the original Game of Thrones series. Right-hand man of the court of the King Ned Stark discovers that he was supposed that the supposed children of the king and queen are illegitimate based on the blonde color of their hair. The king, his family, and all ancestors have black hair. The queen and her brother, who she's a little too close with, have blonde hair. Ned puts soon two together and realizes the king's isn't the kid's dad. Similarly, a plethora of books that serve as a basis of House of Dragon Quarles is described as white, as other Targaryens, which is crucial to the how, how the Quarles family have conceivably played a key role at the center of our story. Swapping Quarles and his family's race creates a problem with the internal logic of the show. How can there be a debate or who's the, over who's the rightful heir when you can literally look at the character's skin color and tell their lineage? Even if we ignore the frankly glaring plot hole of changing the race, uh, Chris's showrunners have already said they did it because they're racist. In an interview conducted by Entertainment Weekly, House of Dragon showrunner Ryan Condal and Miguel Don't Care said it was very important for Miguel and I to create a show that was not just a bunch of white people on screen. I mean, is that your guiding, that's your guiding tenant? Like, that's your core tenant is we're creating a show, but we want to make sure it's not white people. I mean, like, what? He continued, We wanted to find a way to put diversity in the show, but we didn't want to do it in a way that felt like it was an afterthought, or worse, tokenism. Author George R. R. Martin seems to have given his blessings to the project, but it's unclear whether he supports every decision made by the showrunners. Additionally, Martin is an avowed leftist and could go be going down the same route that Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling did, when she started pretending her books were more diverse than they actually were. Regardless, it's concerning that the radical left seems to be openly openly flaunt its racism, receive accolades from the corporate press, articles praising the decision to race swap characters to get rid of evil whitey, 
flooded the net like sewage from a drainage pipe. This isn't anything new. The left is constantly moving to conquer popular franchises. Lord of the Rings, He-Man, and Superman are all victims to the left's battle on pop culture. House of the Dragon, this vibe bonding into comics. House of the Dragon showrun has revealed Game of Thrones spinoff was written to focus on addressing accusations of racism and sexism against the original series. I've been a fan of these books for 20 years, claimed Condal. I was a fan of Game of Thrones. I watched the pilot the night it aired on HBO and every, so, every episode after. You can't follow Thrones. It's the Beatles. I'm setting out as a fan that makes things I want to see, make the things I want to see, and I'm happy with what we've achieved, he added. The Targaryens are like the Jedi in Star Wars, where you heard about this time they planned and powerful and always wanted to see that. And now you get to in the prequel. You heard, you know, many of their Targaryens, you know, power historically from Game of Thrones. Turning to the subject of the series' specific diversity and inclusion efforts, the two then revealed that midway through the development of the House of the Dragons first season, they realized that the show they were unwittingly centering around this, uh, the theme of how, as they put by THR, quote, the patriarchy would rather destroy itself than see a woman on the throne. Elaborating on this realization, uh, Sapochnik said, Sapochnik uh, says, it wasn't something where we said, we must make the show about this. It's rather, it's something we realized that we were, that we had in front of us. An example of the theme, THR highlighted the production detail that brought to light the Alicent Hightower actress, Olivia Cook from Ready Player One. There are times where uh, Renara, whatever, Targaryen, um, is on stage, and I'm on the other end, we're both surrounded by male characters being idiotic. She asserted, and we know all these men just effed off, and it was just us two. The realm would be fine. It's, it's the meddling, it's the peacocking and egos that made completely made everything completely muddy. He further noted, in medieval times, giving birth was uh, aggressive. Told the entertainment trade news, it was as dangerous as it gets. You had a 50-50 chance of making it. We have a number of births in the show that basically decided to give them different themes and explore them from different perspectives the same way I did a bunch of battles on thrones. Moving forward to address their goal of adding racial diversity to the quote known world of Martin series, Condal confirmed that the two quote knew from the outset that they wanted to change the conversation, defending his casting choices, most notably with those which led to race swapping of the House of Valerian by arguing the world changed a lot between 2011 and 2021, and so did what audience expect to see on camera. Again, this is the same exact words. Remember in um in the Amazon article, people want the the world is global now, and people really want to see that. Who are these people? I want to see a show that is that that is good. The color of the skin of the actor is not a feature. It doesn't improve or make a show worse in any way, shape, or form. So if this guy is really the best guy for the role, fine. But you're also dealing with known source material. It's a little different where if you had made like, you know, uh, a not Game of Thrones prequel, not based on source material, and it was just some medieval show and you wanted to have diversity in it. Seems fine to me, but this is known material. So the, the people who really like George R.R. R. Martin already has have these people like pictured in their head. And let's just be honest, it is tokenism. You're just saying, well, we got to make this actor black because you didn't pick him because he was the best for the role. That's, not, that's what you're saying. I don't know that that's not the case. The questions were, how do we create a diverse cast for House of the Dragon, but do it in a way that feels organic? So it isn't organic. See, you admit that your goal was to force diversity into the show, but you wanted us to think it was organic. And doesn't feel like pandering or tokenism. It feels like both of those things. And also have, also have them not be pirates, slaves, or mercenaries like you tend to see in high fantasies. Also, not only you, you had to make sure it was diverse, but you also then had to make sure that they were a particular type of character that portrayed them in a good light. You see a lot of the thing, desire in this comment here. So the entire existence of the show will be for agit prop purposes. I miss the days when studios wanted to make something profitable, something the end product turned out good. I've been a fan of these books for 20 years. Translation, I read Wikipedia articles about the series after it got popular. 
I mean, maybe. And by the way, I, you know, and I've always said, like, there's, you never really know if these if these people are telling the truth, you know, but it's not the actor's fault for taking a job. I've said this, like, a zillion times. Like, and you see House of Dragon Star, Steve Toussaint responds to racist trolls. That's an issue they have to deal with. I don't have to. Um... Everybody who disagrees with you is a troll, I assume. You know, it, it's, again, it's not his job for taking... So I don't, I don't agree with people going after him or saying anything to him negative. It's not his job. I mean, he just took the job. You know, he said, I said, there are people outside who find a little hard to stomach. Someone who looks like me would play this part. That's an issue they have to deal with. I don't have to. The star edit, it's the same. It's always the same. I just have to say the lines convincingly and avoid bumping into the furniture. Earlier this week, the actor revealed that he originally auditioned for Game of Thrones multiple times unsuccessfully before landing a major role in the spinoff. I mean, again, not his fault, but let's not pretend that you aren't changing the skin tone of these characters for ideological reasons, not because of the best. Now, this person may be a great actor, and maybe the show will be great, but we already know when they start out by saying, well, we've got to have X, Y, and Z in terms of the skin color of our actors... The show is going to be garbage. It's just always true. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.